All right, guys, today we're going grocery shopping. We're headed out on a passage soon and we'll be on the water for a couple weeks before we make it to any other place where there's groceries. So we're gonna stock up and get as much non-perishables as we can. First thing is to hop on our taxi dinghy, which makes the grocery dinghy, process much I mean more. dinghy taxi. Dinghy taxi. This is massive low tide right now. Super low tide. Okay, so I got a car coming. It'll be here in five minutes. All right. So, Jasmine and you, what time did she leave the boat last night? Uh, 10 or, yeah, 10, 20. 10, yeah, are you all still getting along okay? Yeah. You're starting to fade. Finn met a girl here and they've been dating, hanging out for about six weeks now. But she's gonna go to college in Canada here in a few weeks and Finn, we're leaving in a few weeks. Are you gonna be sad? That's now, we're gonna jump right back up. No, we're gonna go, oh, so we're gonna stay down. We're gonna go into the half Gonna, right gonna get into that? I don't know. <laughs> Two is one meal for me. Mm. That's two meals. Coriander. I like this garlic. I like that it's already chopped for you. It makes it so much easier for lazy people. Okay, let's go check out. Food. Good. Yeah, lots of stuff they can store. We have Panama bags. We have Seychelles bags. We have all these bags. We have coals from Australia? Everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. Now we'll get a car, another bolt, to take all this stuff back to the boat. There he is. <laughs> oh, there's no room for that here. Word. Okay, so the car's tiny. He has no room in the back because he's got a stereo, and so we're. Hey, you need that spare stereo. <laughs> in the Dar Yacht Club. All the way down there. Jeez, it's an accident waiting to happen. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Is that everything? Yeah, I think so. Come on, let's... Thank you. There you go. I don't know. I guess that's it. That's it. So this haul was 800,000 shillings. 800,000? I think that's about, yeah, $300, 350 I'm not sure. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Yeah. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> ah. What a funny guy. How's it? <laughs> I don't know where we're going. We're going. Exploring. We'll be right here. Okay. <laughs> well. Pull the hook up, let's follow them. Hey, you pull the hook up and I'll drive. Now what we're talking about? Yeah. 
looks like it kind of Yeah. Another one. Jellyfish. Gonna look at a jellyfish. And I just, they're everywhere around here. They're everywhere. I didn't even know. So many jellyfish. And I'm walking. All right. There you go. There you Beautiful. Go, Come on, bro. Have a dance. All right, Dad. Dad, you pull yourself up. Pull yourself up with your feet. There oh. you go. Oh. Keith, I didn't, we didn't talk about the pirates. We talked about um, our sail, our buddy boats, kind of where we're going a little bit. But had a lot of people ask about pirates. There hasn't been a pirate attack against a private vessel for almost, I don't know, 12, 13 years now. They've really cracked down on that and, and, and the policies regarding Somalia have changed from other countries where they recognize what the Somali fishermen have been going through, why they resorted to piracy and all those kind of things. So the security has gotten a lot better. Now there is the internal conflicts between religious extremists. There's uh, Al-Shabaab there. We just took down some of their people in, in Somalia a few weeks ago. And so there, there's a lot of religious extremism in the southern part of uh, Somalia and in, in the central part of Somalia. But once you get up north to Somaliland and around the Gulf of Aden, it becomes less. We're going to be buddy boating with uh, four or five other boats going from uh, Dar es Salaam up to Socotra. Socotra, Socotra, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that. And then we're going to, we, so the big issue is waiting on weather right there for the winds to die down a little bit because the winds come straight down the, the Gulf of Aden and uh, we don't want to be beaten into 600 miles of ocean and wind. So we're, there's, a, there's a time in September where the winds start to die off or change direction. And they, they keep doing that all the way in through October. October and that, that's the window to get through the Gulf of Aden. And once we get into the Gulf of Aden and we get into the Red Sea, we'll probably check in in Egypt somewhere. I'm not quite sure where we're going to check in, but that's where we're going to pick up our five new uh, visitors that are coming out, the young kids that are going to be hanging out, spice it up on Zatar a little bit, have a bunch of fun. We're going to pick them up in the northern part of the Red Sea, either in the Gulf of Aqaba or, or somewhere in Jordan, Israel, or, or Egypt. We, we're not sure where that's going to be yet. One of the things we do as we're sailing up the coast and before we leave, we'll register our boat with, with all the Coast Guard military, the NATO, NATO commanders. We'll send them emails. We'll give them position reports on where we're at as we go up through here from our Uranium Go satellite phone. They will know that we are traveling in that direction so they're gonna be on high alert because nobody wants an international incident where uh, where they uh, kidnap a, a bunch of Americans and take their kids and their wife and their, their as hostage so a lot of people ask what would I do what what would I do if I ran into pirates obviously I don't have no m16s or ak-47s or howitzers on the boat I don't have any kind of uh, weapons of mass destruction here so how would I protect my family if we were and we have been approached by fishing boats before and luckily every boat out there has always been a fishing boat I don't have any cigarettes
how would I protect my family? And, and I tell you, I, I would protect my family. I've got several items on the boat that uh, would make their lives miserable. But if they've got guns, it's going to be hard to protect against that. It's just going to be very hard to protect against that without getting into a gun battle. And like I've said many times in, in our post, it's not worth it to me to get into a gun battle with, with people who have AK-47s because they're probably not very good aim with their, their rifles, their weapons, and they're probably going to end up wounding one of my children, and I can't live with that outcome. So if they're just if they're just stealing something, that's easy. That's materialism. I can let it go. But if they're, you know, if they want to rape my kids, they want to rape my wife, if they want to do bad things to us, then that's a whole other set of criminals that I got to deal with. I don't think it's going to be that bad. I think we're going to have a great time getting up through there. I, I think like most of the places in the world where the media has overhyped it, Hollywood has overhyped it, I think that this is probably going to be the same case. But just in case, we are being vigilant and we're taking precautions to make sure that we have ways to evade capture. We're going in groups. We, we've got people talking to the Coast Guard. So today is Monday and tomorrow we are cleaning the bottom of the boat, uh, scraping it, getting everything off of it so the boat will have some speed to it. Uh, to Wednesday or Thursday, uh, we are getting fuel and filling up. We're securing everything, getting the boat ready for seaworthy passage and uh, getting everything secured and put up so that we are uh, ready to go. And if you guys don't see a video in the next couple of weeks, it's because we've left and, and, and we've been kidnapped and we're hoping somebody pays a ransom. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We just, uh, we, it was pretty because we're out on the water and we haven't, we really don't want to uh, telegraph where we're at, what we're doing and, and where we're going. And so we're trying to be kind of kind of uh, secretive, secretive, secretive about our movement. That is the plan is uh, get provisioned up, get fueled up, get the boat prepped and ready to go. And like I said, if you don't see a video in the next couple of weeks, cause we're just not, we're not uh, uh, advertising where we're going, what we're doing. We're just kind of keeping things on the down low and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the video. It's been four months since we arrived in Tanzania from the Seychelles. Four months since we moved to a new place, a new country. The longest we've stayed in any one place without adventuring was New Zealand during COVID lockdown in 2020. We were stuck there for six months with virtually no movement allowed. As cruising permits are typically only for 90 days, we've enjoyed cruising from place to place about every three months. So now it's time to move on, to head into new territory and to depart this side of Africa for something brand new. Thanks so much for watching our show.